Hello, I'm Knorr, and it's time to do some maths, because I want to find out which positional in Blood Bowl is the best Fowler. Now, I'm specifically talking about Blood Bowl 3 here, so the more teams get released to that game, the more this video is going to be out of date, but don't worry about that, I'm sure I'll make an update later on. Now, why would you want to find out what the best Fowler in Blood Bowl is? Well, mainly for fun, but also... I wanted to look at the TV cost and the SPP cost for different positionals to see if I missed any obvious hidden gems of Fowlers. So I've made a big list of every positional <laughs> available in the game to figure out which one you should build into a Fowler and which are good just the way they are. But before we start, let's go over what a Foul action is. Once per turn, one of your players can make a foul action. That foul action means running up to an opposing player that's already downed, rolling for armor and injury again. The armor roll is modified by the offensive or defensive assist uh, the fowler has on the roll, the same way that strength blocks work. And the injury is just a flat 2d6. Now, if either of these rolls, and of course you only roll injury if you break armor, if either of these rolls are a double, meaning the same results on both of the d6 dice, your player is ejected. The only way to stop this is by trying to argue the call uh, and succeeding, or uh, giving the ref a bribe and succeeding with that. If either of those things fail or are not available, then your player is unfortunately ejected from the game, regardless of what happens with the opposing player. Now, there are two skills in the game that can modify this behavior. The first one is a general skill called Dirty Player, and Dirty Player comes in several plus one or plus two, but when you're buying the skill for one of your players, you're only going to be able to buy the plus one skill. The plus two is only available for certain positionals, the Death Roller on the Dwarf Team, for example, and some star players. Now, <laughs> Dirty Player plus one means that you, uh, your player gets to add plus one to either the armor roll or the injury roll. So if you have a lot of offensive assists, you're likely to be able to apply the plus one to the injury roll. Then, of course, making it even likelier that your opponent is uh, injured and out of the game. The second skill we find in agility, and that is Sneaky Git. Sneaky Git allows you to ignore any doubles rolled on the armor roll, meaning you're much less likely to be ejected from the game if you have Sneaky Git. For my metric of best Fowler, I want a positional that has access to both of these skill groups and doesn't cost too much. The chance of rolling a double on either the armor or the injury is a 1 in 6 chance, so your player is bound to get ejected sooner rather than later. So we want to use a Fowler that preferably costs less in team value than the piece we're trying to injure and eject from the game. Otherwise, we probably could have spent that team value in a more reasonable way. To add to that, we want to mitigate cost by having a player that has primary access to both agility and general skill groups as it costs more team value to pick a secondary skill and it costs more SPP to get a secondary skill. Now, there's a slight kink in this plan, and that is that positionals that have access to both general and agility tend to cost more than players that don't have access to both. So we might end up in a situation where it's cheaper to buy a player that only has access to one of these skill groups and eat the cost of using a secondary skill. That's what the math and the Google Sheet is for. We also need to look at SPP generation uh, because we do need SPP to be able to buy both of these skills. So preferably we'd want a player that's able to generate SPP outside of just randomly getting an MVP. So for this reason I've added checkboxes next to all of the positionals in my uh, sheet to see if they, if I think they're able to score a touchdown, hurt someone, meaning get a cast, 
or throw a pass. Now, of course, there are other ways to get SPP, but those are niche scenarios that I don't think should be applicable to more uh, generalist approach that we're going for here. And now we are finally at the maths portion, or as mentioned previously, the Google Sheet. I've taken every reasonable positional in Blood Bowl 3 up to season 5, uh, added them to a list, um, and I'm going to look at my cheat sheet here so I don't say the wrong thing, because I've added a bunch of things, so excuse me. I have <laughs> listed their base cost, the added TV increase of gaining both skills, the final total TV from the positional, and then I've done the same thing if both skills were gained through random rolls. I've also added the SVP cost for um, both just picking the skills and also rolling them randomly. As mentioned previously, some of these are primary, some of these are secondary skills. That should give us the best Fowler if we can find the lowest cost positional that has the most check marks added, as that should indicate good value but also the chance to quickly get both of these skills. That's it. Let's go uh, through the sheet real quick here and see what gems we can find. I'm going to go through the non-random costs here uh, because that should be the upper cost of the piece. Of course, if you grind and roll randoms, uh, then it will be cheaper. But the results are essentially the same since the random is always half the cost of a picked skill. Uh, realistically, we're also in a position where you probably random the first skill and if you get the one you want, Dirty Player or uh, Sneaky Git, you might then pay uh, full price for the second skill rather than keep randoming. Uh, this also brings us into that some pieces are actually better at randoming because they start out with stuff like dodge or uh, sidestep or something like that so a random in agility or general might be more beneficial to those pieces since they have less chance to not get the skills you want okay let's go in game i'll give you a list of what's cool so the lowest cost positional that has picked both sneaky git and dirty player is obviously the Underworld Snotling coming in at just 75 TV. So on cost alone, this could be considered the best value for money. However, that is also the cost of five Snotlings with no added skills, so it might not be worth it for that reason. Another solid contender is the Halfling on the Human and the Old World Alliance teams, as they both come in at 90. But they are also decently hard to level up, and they don't have general access. So it's gonna cost you 20 SPP to get both skills, and with no good way of generating that SPP, it might take a while before you have a fling with both Dirty Player and Sneaky Git. After that, we have the Rotters on the Nurgle team coming in at 95K, but they mainly suffer the same problem as the flings, and they are hard to level up. At 100K, we have a whole slew of positionals. We have the Necromantic Zombie, the Undead Skeleton and Zombie, the Orc, Chaos Renegade and Underworld Goblins end up here, and so does the Elven Union Lineman. Out of all of these, I think the hidden gem might be the Elven Union Line Elf, as it actually has the ability to score with its high agility and likelihood of actually catching a handoff. And with access to both general and agility, this positional needs less SPP to get both skills compared to any of the previous. Then again, your line elf tends to be missing or injured for most games, so keeping one on the pitch for fouling might be tricky. Finally, I want to highlight two more positionals. Coming in at 105k each, the Black Orc Goblin, costing 5k more than the other goblins, but is the most likely piece to actually score touchdowns out of all of the goblins, which probably makes it much more likely for that team to get a player with both skills. The last, but probably not least, is the Human and Old World Alliance Catchers as they have access to both general and agility, can easily score touchdowns, and with their high movement, 
they're also able to reach almost any foul target on the pitch. And with the relatively low cost and the fact that the human team specifically can have four of them might make them the best fouler available for price and SVP generation. Now, it's all fun and games to figure out what the best fouler is, but what's probably more useful is figuring out which is the best fouler on the team that you like to play. So, let's have a quick run through of this sheet for each team, shall we? On the human team, the cheapest in TV cost is the human halfling, but the better and more likely candidate to get both skills would be the human catcher. It doesn't cost that much more, uh, costs less in SVP, and can score touchdowns, so it's better at generating SVP. On the orc team, it's the orc goblin. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. On the Black Orc team, it's the Black Orc Goblin, one of the best Fowlers in the game. On the Chaos Chosen team, it's the Chaos Beastman. There are only three positionals, and we're not fouling with the big guy or the uh, blocker. On the Chaos Renegades team, once again, it's the Goblin, solid. On the Dark Elf team, it's uh, the cheapest is the Dark Elf Lineman. Uh, but because all of them have general and agility, you can pretty much use the uh, runner, assassin, or the line elf, and they're all fine, if a bit costly. On the dwarf team, uh, surprising no one, it's the dwarf blocker, but I'm not sure you'd get either uh, dirty player or sneaky git when you can get uh, guard and mighty blow. The Elven Union team is in a similar scenario as Dark Elf. The Lineman is the absolute best choice uh, when it comes to cost. But of course, both the Catcher and the Thrower have an equally easy time getting the SPP needed. On Imperial Nobility, it is the Lineman because it's the cheapest one available. Uh, the one that's cheapest in SPP cost is the Blitzer, but you only have two of those, so you're probably not building one of them to be a Fowler. On the Lizardman team, the Lizardman Skink is slightly cheaper than the Lizardman Chameleon, and other than that, they're very similar. Uh, but they cost a bit. On the Nurgle team, we do have the Nurgle Rotters uh, coming in at 95k. That's decently cheap, but it's going to be hard to get the SPP needed. On Old World Alliance, we have catchers and halflings again, but here there's only one human catcher available, meaning you might uh, want to use the halfling for fouling instead. On Shambling Undead, the zombie and the skeleton come in at the same cost, but the skeleton has one more movement, so I'm going to give the slight edge to the skeleton. On Underworld, as mentioned, the Snotling is the uh, best bargain when it comes to straight up uh, team value, but it's going to be hard to get the SVP needed on such a squishy piece, so the Underworld Goblin might be a better choice, or if you want to be spicy, your solo gutter runner uh, is the one that has the easiest access to both of the skills. On the Wood Elf team, it's a similar scenario as with all the other teams, meaning that the Line Elf is the best choice. Uh, the Catcher and the Thrower, of course, can also uh, do stuff, uh, as they might be able to generate some more SVP quicker, but they all have access to general and agility, so SVP-wise, it's pretty cheap. And lastly, the Necromantic, uh, the Necromantic Zombie, is the cheapest of the bunch, uh, but the Necro Ghoul and the Necro Werewolf both have general and agility axes, so they might be spicy choices if you wanna go for something with a bit more mobility. And that brings us to the end of the video. What have we learned? I think for me, uh, the big eye-opener was not just the human catcher, which I knew was good, but also the Elven Union lineman. I rarely play a Fowler on an Elven team, and maybe that's wrong, because getting one lineman to uh, both uh, Dirty Player and Sneaky Git could actually generate a lot of um, 
uh, foul send-offs. Now, of course, you still have to knock down your opponent's pieces, which can be difficult with uh, a team such as Elven Union. So it might not work out other than in my head, uh, but it's probably something I'm going to try. Now, when it comes to the cheapest uh, positional, the Underworld Snotling, they might not be the best Fowlers going forward as they are going to lose Swarming uh, sometime in the future as the latest Blood Bowl 2020 Errata and FAQ nerfed them hard to make the Underworld team uh, slightly less amazing uh, on tabletop. So uh, maybe we want to go for an Underworld Goblin as a Fowler. In theory, they're at least slightly sturdier. And the fact that one dirty player sneaky git snotling costs the same as five snotlings without seems just like a lot of skills to add to a very um, inexpensive piece that's probably just gonna die in three games anyways. And finally, I think the most eye-opening thing was that in regards to the stunties, um, you know, I've always seen those as like, oh, of course you foul with the stunty players because they're weak and they're not necessarily that strong and they don't cost that much. But if you add both of the skills onto a piece, the difference between some of these stunty um, players and some of the other positionals on the other teams aren't actually that much. We're talking about uh, 40k, 30k, of course, depending. So in some cases, it, it seems like pretty viable to just run a uh, dirty player sneaky git on essentially any team as long as you can get the svp and keep that player alive uh, but what do you think as always at the end of the video i do have to ask for your comments down below let me know what you made out of this video and if you want to see me do more of these stupid types of deep dive into specific blood bowl uh, mechanics that's it for now. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps so much. Season 5 is almost upon us, and don't worry, there will be more Blood Bowl gameplay coming soon. Goodbye for now.